What's going on YouTube? My name is Rashad Scales. If this is your first time here, I create faith-based content intended to help strengthen and encourage you in your walk with the Lord. So today in this video, guys, I want to talk about how as believers we are dead to sin. Uh, this is something that uh, has came across my mind and has been on my heart. So I'm just going to read out of the book of Romans chapter 6. It, it goes into in depth of how as believers we've died to the power of sin and we are now alive to God in Christ. Amen. Um, and I just want to read out of the word because I think it's so important that we, um, you know, don't speak on our own opinions or I just want to show you guys what the Bible says about this topic. So we're going to start reading in chapter 6 if you want to grab your Bibles and read along with me. Um, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So as believers, we are dead to the law. So we've died to the law which once held us in bondage so that we can be joined to another. To Jesus Christ who was raised from the dead in order that we may bear fruit as the Bible says so we couldn't bear fruit under the law as we died we died with Christ and as Christ rose we rose from the dead and in that we died to the law guys we are no longer under the law we're no longer operating under the law as believers it's so important to understand that we don't we don't keep laws we don't keep rules to be made right with God uh, it's strictly by faith in Christ Jesus by grace amen thank you thank you thank you thankful for the new covenant okay we're gonna uh, back up and we are going to read the end of chapter 5 okay so it says moreover the law entered that the offense might abound that sin might increase but where sin abounded, right, where sin increased, it says grace abounded much more. God's grace is abundant. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness. Wow. To eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So just as sin reigned in death, even so grace grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ. And then Paul goes on to say, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? So notice, when we sin, God's grace abounds. It abounds. God's grace is abundant. And that's something that I'm able to realize in my life is when I fell short or when I fall short, I experience His grace to empower me, to strengthen me, to uplift me, to get back up and keep moving forward, to get back on the path. Amen. So Paul says, what shall we say then? Shall we just continue in sin that grace may abound? Now, I know a lot of people like to attack grace preachers because they say that you give these people license to sin when you're preaching that, but it's just not biblical, guys. You know? The Bible clearly says that we are dead to sin. We'll get to that later on. But God's grace, it teaches us to live holy, to love righteous, as the Bible says. It, it teaches us to, to live godly. It trains us in righteousness. It's, it's His grace. It's something that we get that we don't deserve. <laughs> deserve. And it's just a matter of us receiving that free gift, that free gift of of righteousness through faith in Christ um, certainly not how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it now, as a believer we've died to sin and for someone who is thinking about okay I'm just gonna go live my life in sin now that I'm saved by grace Try that and let me know how that works because you have been given a new heart. You have, a, you have the Spirit of the Lord in you and you have new desires and that is the Holy Spirit working in you uh, to get these new desires and to want what God wants now. So Paul says, how can we as believers live in sin any longer when we have died to it? So go ahead, you know, any believer, go ahead and sin 
and let me know how that works. You're gonna be miserable because you know that this is not what you were created to do. You, you, were, you were just gonna be miserable, straight up forward. And you know that this is not how God wants you to be living your life. Yes, sin is, there's pleasure in sin, but only for a moment. In the end, it leads to destruction. But don't be deceived by the enemy. And I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I, f I fell into the deception of sin, you know, for that, for that short, short-term pleasure. It's just, it's just not worth it. So we just need to, we honestly need to just trust God. We need to trust God at his word. You know, when we're tempted, say I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to that. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm dead to it, as the Bible says it. Amen. It says, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, Jesus were baptized into his death. This is a spiritual baptism, guys. We were baptized into Christ and when we placed faith in him, we were baptized into his death. Therefore, it says, we were buried with him. We were buried with Christ through baptism into death. That just as Christ raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. That old woman, that old man you used to be, is crucified with Christ if you place your faith in him. That the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. We, uh, before Christ, we are slaves to our sin, but when we come to Christ, we are no longer slaves to sin, amen. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Guys, this is what the Bible says. He who has died, meaning died with Christ on the cross, it's a spiritual death. He who has died has been freed from sin. This is what the Bible says. Freed. As believers, we are free from sin. And when we sin, we choose to sin. But we know deep down in our hearts that we're dead to that. So there's no, there's no, there shouldn't be no excuses. Oh, the devil made me do it. No. You just wanted to sin, just be honest. You just wanted to sin. You wanted that pleasure. And I'm, I'm preaching to myself too. When I fall short sometimes, I'm not gonna blame it on the devil or the enemy or whoever's too strong. No, I'm gonna say, I just wanted to sin. But God still loves us. He's for us. But he wants us to understand that sin has consequences and we will not escape that in this life. Amen. It says, now if we died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Praise the Lord. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. Okay, but the life he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. So as believers, it's very important that we reckon ourselves, this is faith, reckon ourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then it says, therefore... Do not let sin reign in your moral body, that you should obey it in its lust. So notice, sin is referred to as an it. It's a, it's a, um, it's a thing. We, it's very important to understand that we are not our sin, okay? You are not your sin. Sin right here is referred to an it. The Bible says that we can obey it, sin, in its lust. Sin has lust, okay? Obviously, as believers, we can let sin reign in our mortal bodies. And the Bible says we should not. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. That's how we are to present ourselves to God, as being alive from the dead. Amen? And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Hear this, guys. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you were not under the law, but under grace. The Bible is very clear, guys, that sin shall not have dominion over us as believers, okay? For we're not under the law anymore. Under the law, we were enslaved to sin. We were in bondage to sin. But under grace, we are set free from the power of sin. Amen. Amen. Thank God for grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves 
whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Now hear this, guys. This is very important. But, every time you hear but, you need to pay attention. But, God be thanked that though you were, key word, were, that's past tense, that's used to be, though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. What doctrine was that? That was the gospel. We obeyed the gospel from the heart, therefore we are obedient Christians. Amen. And having been set free from sin, set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Guys, that is our identity. We are a slave of righteousness. We want what God wants. We want to do what's right now. We can't get enough of it. We can't get away from it. So just walk in that identity. Amen. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, past tense, you were free in regard to righteousness. You notice how when we were deep in our sin, we didn't even have a thought come to mind about living righteous or living holy. But now that we've come to know the Lord, we want to live righteous, we want to live holy, we want to live in a way that pleases God. Amen. We're slaves of righteousness. It says, what fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? I asked myself, when I was living that sinful life, what fruit came from that? What fruit came from getting drunk from Thursday to Saturday? but waking up with a hangover and, and um, wasting my time and yeah what fruit did I get from hooking up with multiple women but getting strep throat what fruit came from that I'm sorry guys I'm gonna be real what fruit did I bear from watching things I wasn't supposed to be watching but a corrupt mind a twisted mind that literally changed the way I perceived women and and yeah what fruit guys came from that I was depressed miserable scared walking in fear uh, guilt shame what fruit guys came from the things mm, of which we are now ashamed of <laughs> no fruit at all for the end of those things is death the end of a sinful lifestyle is death. We gotta understand this. Yes, sin is pleasing, but the end of it is death. And it's so important, because the enemy will make us blind to the very fact of what sin can do to us. It will catch up to us. We may not see it then and now. Oh, but we will experience the consequence. For the Bible says you reap what you sow. Whatever we sow, we're going to reap. And if we sow to please the flesh, we're going to reap destruction. But if we sow to please the Spirit, we're going to reap eternal life. Amen. Amen, guys. But now having been set free from sin, amen, and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. So the fruit we now bear, now that we're slaves um, of righteousness and we want to do what's good, we we bear fruit that leads to uh, eternal life. Amen? Everlasting life. Praise God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is chapter 6, guys. I want to emphasize, brothers and sisters, that you are dead to sin. We just need to realize it. We need to come to a knowledge of who we are in Christ, our identity, and tell the devil to flee because he will make us blind to the very fact of the consequences that come with our sin when we choose to act in the flesh but god loves us so much he's for us he sent his only son only begotten son jesus christ into this world to die for our sins all of our sins that we could be cleansed made new restored back with relationship with the father amen 
he's good. He is good, guys. So I pray and hope this message really blessed you. And I plan to do more videos like this where I just open up the word and I read it to you guys. And I minister to you guys. And I hope that it bless you. And I hope that it opens up your eyes. In Jesus' name. I love you guys. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.